Radio, on Global Player, and Play LBC News, where the news never stops. This is LBC News. From Global's newsroom, it's six o'clock on Monday, the 28th of October. I'm Lisa Aziz. A very good morning to you. Here's the latest. The EU is considering whether to extend the Brexit deadline from this Thursday until the end of January. MPs will vote later on whether to back Boris Johnson's call for a general election on the 12th of December. Despite the likely delay to Brexit, the government's going ahead with its preparations, though, for a no-deal outcome on Thursday. Speed limits and contraflows are being introduced on the M20 in Kent from this morning to keep the motorway open in case there's disruption at the Channel ports. The Prime Minister has warned the battle against the evil of the Islamic State group is not yet over. But he's described the death of its leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi in a US military operation as an important moment in the fight against terror. And coming up, we investigate England's first ever inland surfing lagoon, which has opened near Bristol. LBC News. Weather. Chilly to start in London, but it is going to be a largely sunny day with a high of 10 degrees. I'm Rebecca Swash. I've got a full forecast in the next 15 minutes. LBC News. Travel. Good morning. It's not a great start on the tubes. There's no service on the clockwise circle line after a signal failure at Whitechapel. It's left the whole of the Hammersmith and City line suspended and there's no district line running between Barking and Orgate East. We've also got delays of up to a quarter of an hour to mainline trains coming into and out of St Pancras Station. That's because of a technical fault. On the roads, Balmoral Drive in Boreham Wood is blocked by an accident. Ripple Road in Barking also blocked by an accident just off Station Parade. Just bus is able to use it at the moment, Lisa. And in Canning Town, Tollgate Road is partly blocked eastbound by an accident just off the A13 Newham Way. I'm Russell Holding. Your next updates in 10 minutes here on LBC News. This is LBC News. LBC News time. It's now two minutes past six. Our top story this morning. With three days left until Brexit is scheduled to take place, the EU is considering whether to extend the deadline until the end of January. Reports suggest the European Union will offer the chance of the UK withdrawing before then if Parliament backs Boris Johnson's deal. Chief Brussels correspondent for Politico, David Hertzenhorn, has told LBC News ambassadors from the other 27 member states will be meeting later to discuss discuss whether to approve a delay. There is still the possibility, and we understand this would be a flex extension, as it's being called, because the UK would still have the ability to get out of the EU either on uh, December 1st or January 1st. That seems to be what's shaping up this sort of, you know, early exit if everything is ready, if everything is ratified. After the Commons voted against plans to fast-track scrutiny of his withdrawal agreement bill, the Prime Minister will ask MPs this afternoon to agree to a general election on the 12th of December. If he fails, Downing Street suggested, though, the government might end up working with the Lib Dems and SNP on their alternative plan for a poll on December the 9th. The parties intend to trigger an election through a parliamentary bill. That would only require the support of 320 MPs to pass, rather than the 434 that would be needed under the Fixed Term Parliaments Act. And that means it could go through without the backing of Labour. Here's the Liberal Democrat leader, Joe Swinson. We are putting forward forward a bill which would set the date of the election at the 9th of December. It would also make that conditional on an extension being secured to Article 50, which crucially would take no deal off the table. And it's up to Boris Johnson. He says he wants an election. If he's serious about that, this is the challenge. Here is a bill that he can back. It has the backing of the Liberal Democrats. It has the backing of the SNP. And a simple majority will be sufficient for it to pass. And this would be a way of having that election uh, without the Prime Minister being able to uh, subvert uh, the will of the public and crashes out without a deal. Well, the Culture Secretary Nicky Morgan is among Conservatives, though, who've branded the move by the Lib Dems and the SNP 
as a stunt. What is different about the offer, uh, or the stunt, I might say, by the SNP and the Lib Dems is they have obviously, they've made it clear they have no intention of wanting Brexit to be done, no intention of wanting the withdrawal bill, which did get its second reading approved last week, to be considered by Parliament. They're saying go for an election. Now, it may well be that uh, an election obviously uh, is going to happen. If the SNP and the Lib Dems want an election, they have a chance to vote for one as quickly as tomorrow when the government's motion is voted on. And we'll see whether they're in our lobby or not. Despite the likely delay to Brexit, the government's going ahead, though, with its preparations for a no-deal outcome on Thursday. Speed limits and contraflows are being introduced on the M20 in Kent from this morning to keep the motorway open in case there's disruption at the Channel ports. We will, of course, keep you updated with today's latest Brexit developments right here on LBC News. This is LBC News. Now, Boris Johnson's warned the battle against the evil of the Islamic State group is not yet over, despite the death of its leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. The Prime Minister's described his death in a U.S. military operation at the weekend as an important moment in the fight against terror. President Trump announced the news at the White House yesterday, describing the terrorist leader as sick and depraved. A brutal killer has violently been eliminated. He will never again harm another innocent man, woman, or child. He died like a dog. He died like a coward. The world is now a much safer place. Well, President Trump's language at that press conference has certainly raised some eyebrows. Former CIA covert operations officer Michael Baker has told LBC News we shouldn't be too surprised at it. We all know that the president's not exactly the most eloquent or elegant uh person when he when he starts you know free forming um but there was no you know there's no sources or methods dis- mm-hmm. disclosed and i suspect part of this was the desire maybe to take a bit of a shine off of baghdadi and and the idea of of making him seem less i don't want to, this is going to be an odd word to use but glamorous so you know you talk about it in in, in sort of the gruesome terms of 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 how he killed himself and his kids yeah. and you know again you make him seem less of a of a hero or a martyr and more of the psychopathic uh, killer that he actually was France and Russia have echoed Boris Johnson's comments that the battle against the Islamic State group is not yet over, despite the death of Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. The Democrat U.S. presidential hopeful Bernie Sanders agrees. While it is a good thing that the leader of ISIS has been killed, unless we develop an international effort to bring stability to the region, I fear that more leaders will continue to pop up. This is NBC News. In other top stories this morning, a 25-year-old man's due in court charged with the manslaughter of 39 people whose bodies were found in the back of a lorry trailer in Grays in Essex. Maurice Robinson from Craigavon in County Armagh is also accused of conspiracy to traffic people, conspiracy to assist unlawful immigration and money laundering. Three other people arrested over the discovery last Wednesday were released on bail yesterday. Essex police say a man arrested in Dublin by Irish police over an unconnected matter on Saturday is a person of interest in their investigation. Six men have been arrested on suspicion of murder after a 35-year-old died in a stabbing in Blackpool. John Stratford has more for LBC News. Chris Cam, who lived in Blackpool, was subjected to a violent group attack on Queen Victoria Road in the city just before 11.15 on Saturday morning. He suffered two stab wounds to his upper leg. He was taken to Blackpool's Victoria Hospital, where he died of his injuries last night. It's believed his attackers approached him in a black VW Golf before fleeing the scene in the same vehicle. Lancashire police have arrested six men aged between 18 and 28 on suspicion of murder. A 31-year-old woman is also being held on suspicion of assisting alleged offenders. It's claimed almost one in five parents have had to leave their jobs because of the high cost of childcare. A similar number want to work but can't afford to because of the cost. Research carried out by a campaign group suggests women mainly bear the brunt of childcare costs and this all adds to the gender pay gap. Jolie Brilly is the founder of the group Pregnant Then Screwed. We've known for a long time that childcare is pushing women in particular out of the workplace. 
Uh, there was some research done by Save the Children either last year or the year before, which showed that there are 870,000 stay-at-home mums who want to work but can't. I mean, the cost of childcare in the UK is the most the second most expensive in the world. It is prohibitively expensive. And we know that childcare services in London cost an average of £8.60 per hour. And across the UK, full-time care is an average of £232 per week. It just doesn't make financial sense for many parents to work. The cost of two children in childcare is more than the average salary and we know that many mothers in particular are actually paying to go to work because they desperately want to stay in the workplace because they know that leaving at that point will affect their long-term career. This is LBC News. You're listening to LBC News this Monday morning. I'm Lisa Aziz. Very good morning to you. Coming up, the very latest business news. This is LBC News. Do you have a chronic lung disease like COPD, bronchitis, emphysema or asthma? Flu, on top of health conditions like these, can easily develop into something very serious and land you in hospital. That's why the flu jab is free for you. You need it. So don't put it off. Contact your GP or pharmacist to get your free flu jab now. NHS, help us help you stay well this winter. We are UNICEF and we declare war. War on the biggest child killer the world has ever known. War on disease. Every day disease claims the lives of 7,000 children, but with your support, we can change that. With our weapons of mass protection, we shall vaccinate and immunize. We shall defend the world's children in their hour of need. For if we don't, who will? Please search War on Disease to find out more. Because if this isn't something worth fighting for, what is? From the case files of Miss Maureen 118212, the case of the replacement rodent. A woman called asking for the number of a pet shop. She needed a new hamster before her son returned from school. I didn't ask what happened to the original hamster. Best not to know some things. Maureen 118212. For directory inquiries, call Maureen on 118212. Calls cost 250 per call plus 75p a minute with a minimum one minute charge plus your phone company's access charge. LBC News. Latest travel, next. The Mazda sale means this autumn there's no time like the present. And there's no present like a brand new Mazda. And now there's an additional £500 of our entire range of cars. So if you want an award-winning Mazda, the time is now. Visit your local Mazda dealer or search Mazda sale. £500 Mazda sale savings available on new vehicles registered between the 21st of October and 30th of November 2019. Subject to availability at participating dealers, retail sales only, T's and C's apply. LBC News. Travel. On the tubes, there's no service on the Hammersmith and City line after a signal failure with just minor delays left now on the Circle and District lines. There are delays of up to 20 minutes to mainline trains running into and out of St Pancras Station because of a technical problem. Now on the roads in Shepherd's Bush on the A219 Wood Lane, it's down to a single lane southbound for emergency repairs just off the A40, the Westway. Embarking Ripple Roads blocked by an accident at Station Parade, although buses are still able to use it at the moment. And in Canning Town, Tollgate Roads partly blocked eastbound by an accident just off the A13 Newham Way Junction. I'm Russell Holding. Your next update is in 10 minutes here on LBC News. LBC News. Weather. After a chilly start, any fog will clear to leave a largely sunny day in London. It will feel cool, though, with a high of 10 Celsius. Tonight should be a little milder than last night. There's also a chance more fog will develop in some areas. Temperatures shouldn't drop below 7 Celsius. There'll be more sunshine around tomorrow, but with cloud at times, it should also be a touch milder than it has been today, with temperatures expected to reach 13 degrees.
LBC News Time. It's now 6.14. I'm Lisa Aziz. Good morning to the business news now then and the FTSE 100. That's going to start the day at 73.24 after closing down three points on Friday. For the main headlines, though, what we can expect this week, David Buick from Core Spreads joins me now. Uh, morning, David. Good morning, Lisa. So what market movements likely then after last week's volatility? Well, and of course, continuing Brexit uncertainty. Absolutely. But equity markets on the whole across the globe had a pretty good week. Why? Two reasons. The thought that phase one of a trade deal between China and the United States may well actually take place, which should steady some rather frayed nerves, together with the fact that the earnings season in the United States last week was the biggest one of the quarter, was massive, and on the whole, apart from a few disappointments like Amazon and one or two others, was decent, and also, as you rightly said, maybe there's just a little chink on the horizon that Brexit may be over in the next three months. We all cross our fingers to say that. Going forward, of course, we also had last uh, we also look forward to this week is another huge set of results numbers in point of fact at four o'clock this morning HSBC reported its numbers uh, your listeners may recall that its previous CEO John Flint was asked to go out the door as the the company was unhappy with the return on equity, which was low as about 6.4%, when other banks in the United Kingdom is near 10%, in the United States about 15%. HSBC posted very disappointing numbers this morning, with profits down 18% to $4.8 billion. Uh, the revenue was down 3%, $13.4 billion. Um, Noel Quinn is the current uh, chief executive who's in situ, but we don't know for how long. As I say, the return on equity was 6.4%. What was interesting is 83% of the profits come from the Far East, of which Hong Kong is still, despite the problems over there, still pretty buoyant. Continental Europe and the United Kingdom's business was awful, was down 94%. Other companies to look forward to this week, Lisa, we've got BP and also Shell reporting their numbers, and people are always very often because they're keen uh, constituent stocks for their pensions. Other companies reporting include Jaguar Land Rover, Smith & Nephew, um, BT Group, Standard Chartered Bank, and other smaller companies, but it's going to be a very interesting week. Two things, I think, on the economic front, I think that your listeners should be paying attention to. We've got a slew of economic data this week, and I'm afraid the Brexit situation will be disturbed, we think, by CBI's distributed trade survey being rather negative. And then we've got the GFK consumer confidence, which we think will be down. And Friday, the purchase manager's instructions, they are likely to be down, suggesting that maybe in the next two years, growth may be only around the 1.3%. And the other yardstick is to look on Friday to the United States' non-farm payrolls, where we expect falling level of jobs being created, probably only 105,000. But look at that unemployment figure, only 3.6%. And in the last 10 seconds, David, uh, just a final word on Europe. The central bank there having a change of leader. Very much so. We've had, a, um, since, 19, since 2011, i.e. eight years, we've had the great Mario Draghi, who was a superb... Uh, central bank president. Why? Because he managed to balance the political problems of 27 countries with being an independent central banker and he will be replaced by Madame Christine Lagarde uh, in November next month in other words. David, thanks very much indeed. Talk to you tomorrow. Absolutely look forward to it. This is LBC News. From business then to sport, here now with this morning's full roundup, Simon Williams. Liverpool have restored their six-point lead at the top of the Premier League after coming from behind to beat Spurs. Mo Salah got the winning goal from the penalty spot at Anfield last night. Manager Jurgen Klopp says it was one of his side's best performances. It was a super game. It was just how football should look, how I should play against a really strong, good organised side. But counter-press was exceptional, was kind of back. <laughs> yeah. We won it and we deserve it and I'm really happy about the performance. Manchester United missed two penalties but still managed to win 3-1 at Norwich. Arsenal's 2 all draw with Crystal Palace was overshadowed by new captain Grant Xhaka arguing with his own fans as he was being substituted after an hour. His manager Unai Emery says his behaviour wasn't acceptable. We are going to speak about that because the reaction was, was wrong. Was wrong, but uh, we are going to speak inside and uh, with, with the players, with the club for 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 this this reaction. 
Newcastle and Wolves drew one all in yesterday's other top flight game. Swansea beat Cardiff 1-0 in the South Wales derby in the Championship. Bristol City drew 2 all with Wigan. QPR and Brentford go head-to-head tonight. Celtic have gone back to the top of the Scottish Premiership on goal difference after a 4-0 win at Aberdeen. Rangers beat Motherwell 2-1. And Lewis Hamilton will have to wait at least another week to be crowned Formula One world champion for a sixth time. He won last night's Mexican Grand Prix, but his teammate and the only driver with a chance of catching him, Valtteri Bottas, finished third. This is LBC News. You're listening to LBC News this Monday morning. I'm Lisa Aziz. Very good morning to you. We are live across the UK on DAB Digital Radio, on your smart speaker and on Global Player. You can also stay right up to date at lbcnews.co.uk.